As you can probably see next to me is Neil's cross country bike at the moment. Missing a fork, that's because we're about to fit a nice shiny new fork to it. In doing so, I wanna point out the fact that there are a lot of classic mistakes that people make when fitting forks. You definitely do not wanna make any of those because they're really expensive. So here are 10 mistakes that people make when fitting a pair of suspension forks to a bike. And more importantly, what you can do to avoid them. Number one is cutting the steerer tube to the wrong length. So if you look at Neil's old fork here and you can see the length of the steerer tube and you offer up the new one, you can see it's significantly longer. That's because I do need to trim that down to the correct length. Now I don't need to tell anyone this, you need to measure this twice and cut once. You never want to mess this up, it's a very expensive mistake. Now I could quite easily just measure this against the existing steerer, but really to safeguard yourself, what you want to be doing is offering up inside the bike, fit the stem, fit the spaces, make a marking to where you want to make that cut and then check it and then make the cut. Definitely don't chance it by just offering up against you what you already have. It's very easy to make a mistake. Not leaving enough space for your stem spaces. Now this is another classic mistake that you'll cut the steerer tube down, it'll fit on the bike nice and flush, but you have zero adjustment. Also something, a little safety point, is that there should be a three millimeter gap between the top of the steerer tube and the inside of the top of the stem. And the reason for that is when you're compressing it all to preload those bearings, it obviously needs to move fractionally, so it doesn't have to have a little, basically a margin of error there. Some stem manufacturers and some fork manufacturers are now actually suggesting that you leave enough space and you run a spacer on the top and you have that margin of error on the spacer itself. So that way the stem gets a full interface on the steerer tube. Worth taking into account and what I always recommend doing is leave that little bit extra because you can fine tune your ride. Now Neil actually has had two spacers on his bike previously. Uh, I'm gonna actually cut it down so he only has a single spacer and he wants it on the top so he can get that nice connection because his stem has got quite a low stack height, which means if you have that three millimeter gap underneath the top of the stem, you're not having a whole lot of stem gripping on the steerer tube. So for safety element, having that on the top gives you that little bit of margin of error and you can tweak around your ride height slightly as well. Not having a nice sharp blade on your hacksaw. This is really important to get a good clean cut. The amount of people I've seen using old hacksaw blades just literally hacking at steerer tubes on forks and not cutting it down properly. That's not what you want to be doing. And also you need to take into account how you actually use a hacksaw. You don't want to be pulling out, you don't want to be pushing and pulling. Basically you want to be doing the cutting in one direction, unweighting it and pulling it back. It's a nice smooth action to get a nice smooth cut. There is also another option available to you if you're not gonna use a hacksaw, and that is a pipe cutter. Now pipe cutters are good to use if you use a high quality one that's designed for using on hard anodized steerer tubes like this one. What you don't wanna be using is a generic household one that are actually used for softer pipes like copper piping, for example, in central heating. If you wind one of those up and you start cutting your steerer tube one of those, you can actually flare the ends of the tube very slightly, enough that it's going to make putting the steerer tube through your headset a real pain, and also getting steerer tube spacers over there and your stem on the end can be a real tight fit. So, if you're going to use a pipe cutter, only use a high quality one that's designed for using on harder metals. Next up is not cutting your steerer tube level, i.e. having a cut that's kind of on the piss a bit. Right? You do not want to do this, this is not good, uh, not good practice, it looks horrible. And in an ideal world, you want to be using something like this, which is basically a saw guide, specifically designed for doing this one job. You place this part in a vise, the fork goes through here, you clamp it in place, and you've got a nice accurate guide there to cut your fork steerer tube in the correct place. However, that is quite a specialist tool, and if you're not gonna be doing this more than a couple of times, it can be hard to justify the cost. So a cool little hack that you can use to get a similar effect is get yourself an old stem, someone, one of your friends is likely to have one, put a stem on the steerer tube, I can use this as a guide, basically cut up against the stem. Obviously don't use the one you intend on using again because you can scratch them, scuff them, and generally you treat them pretty badly, but this old thing is ideal for doing just that. 
However you decide to cut your steerer tube, once you have, you're gonna to need to file the ends of that cut. And the reason for that is it's gonna leave a sharp burr around the edge. So A, you can cut your hands on that, and B, it makes it really hard for installing the fork correctly into a headset, through headset spaces, the stem, all of that sort of stuff. Now firstly, you wanna have a nice sharp metal file. So you wanna do a nice smooth action and give it a slightly rounded edge. And don't forget to do the outside and the inside. Take care when you're checking it, in case there are any burrs, because it's very easy to just put a fine slice in the end of your finger. And make sure it's nice and smooth all over. Now the real important thing here, and the thing that people classically do wrong, is let those metal filings go all over the fork. In particular, anywhere near the fork seals. Now they can be a real pain to get off because of the amount of oil and residue around these. And sometimes you won't even notice that you've got metal filings around your seals until it's too late. Think how a fork works. It's a telescopic action, and it naturally is gonna ingest mud, muck, and you guessed it, metal filings if they're in there. Metal filings will do much damage to the inside of your forks, in particular to those expensive bushings that help them slide up and down. And basically, they're just not very good for your bike. So, pay attention when you're filing. Don't let the metal filings get anywhere near stuff. If you're paranoid about it, you could even put a plastic bag over your fork when you're making that cut, just to make sure there's no contamination. Next up is not installing your star-fangled nut correctly. This is a classic, it happens all the time. I could even name some people in this building that work on GMBN that do this wrong quite constantly. I'm not looking at you, Blake, but maybe I am. So, the star nut, there's a few different ways you can do this wrong. The first one is by not having the correct installation tool. And of course, an installation tool for putting these on a bike is an expensive and a very specific tool for the job. It is the best tool and really is the only way to do it properly, but you can do it in other ways. One example is literally using the bolt that you use with a star nut and hammering it into the bike. Be careful if you're gonna do this, it's really easy, firstly, to get it wrong and put it in at an angle. Once it starts going at an angle, it's very hard to get right, and you're never gonna get a decent preload on your headset if you do it like this. The next one is hammering it in too deep. You're never gonna be able to reach the thing, and the only way of getting a starter out is by continuing to push it all the way out the steerer tube, and then at the end of the day, it's gonna be broken and not good for anything then. So that's two classics straight away. Another one is when you're hammering it in, they can actually separate. So Star Nut's made of three pieces, the two star fangled plates and obviously the threaded section that holds it together. You can actually shock these apart inside the steerer tube and you're never gonna be able to get any preload. You're just gonna be stuck with something rattling around on the inside. So try and avoid that at all costs. Not using grease. Um, we've said this many times with bikes, there's lots of moving parts and components that do need lubrication. And the chances are that you've probably never put any grease in your headset. Why would you? It's kind of a fit and forget thing because of the fact that it's hidden away on the bike, it's not like something mechanical that you can see like your transmission. So when you have a fork out of the bike, it's a really good idea, take the bearings out, inspect them, make sure they still feel okay, give them a wipe down, make sure they're fairly clean. Same with the cups on the inside of the frame and put a load of fresh grease in there. The amount of people I know that don't have any grease on their bikes and they insist on still riding them, you're just gonna kill those bearings really quickly. Use loads of grease and it makes everything better. And the last one on the list is not lining up your handlebars and stem correctly. We've all done it and we've all sat on a friend's bike and realized that the handlebars are kind of off skew. Um, it's quite hard to get them very accurately set up, but there's a few little tips and tricks you can do to make it a little bit easier because it can be, you know, using your eye to get it right, quite difficult. Now the first one is most people try and line up a stem with the front tire. It used to be quite easy when you had nice long stems, uh, well, horrible long stems in fact, but these days with really short stems, it's very hard to actually get that right. So a much better tip is actually to line up your handlebars with your fork crowns because you can look directly down at them. The handlebar relationship is much closer to them. Um, but one last tip you can do, um, this is taking things to extremes though, would be to remove the controls off your bar, so take off the grips, or uh, perhaps you can just move your brake levers out the way, lean the fork legs up against the wall and handlebars up against the wall, and you can actually use that flat wall, assuming the wall is completely flat, to make sure your bars and your forks are in line. 
clamp it all down, and then when you put your wheel back in, you'll find it is dead arrow straight. Um, don't be one of those people that rides with wonky stem. Messing up your cable routing. Now there's plenty of things that can go wrong here. Obviously you want a nice clean route for the front brake to get down to the fork. Now firstly, what you want to make sure you're doing is not having that cable running up, or the hose running up the outside of the fork leg. First reason for that is it's quite likely to rub on your fork and rub that paint away. The second reason for that is it's very easy to be snagged as you're riding through the undergrowth and if you have a crash, you can actually damage that front brake hose very easily. You wanna be rooting it through the inside of the fork here, on the inside of the leg, and up through the archway here with the supplied cable mount. Now this is the culprit of loads of classic mistakes. People mess these bolts up and strip these threads all the time. It's a very delicate bolt. It's only a retainer just to hold that cable in place. You're not really clamping it down with any sort of force. So make sure you don't go crazy on the anarchy. You don't want to be hanging that off and actually damaging it. Not using a shock pump to set up the correct air pressure in your fork. Now I know what the temptation is. I know some people that do this quite often. Using a track pump to inflate your fork is not a good idea. So forks run at fairly low pressures. You're talking like up to 100 PSI. It's not much and there's something very achievable by a track pump, but you definitely do not want to be using a track pump with any sort of adapter on your fork. The reason for that is it forces a lot of air in very, very fast. It's very easy to damage your seals, very easy to damage the valve on the top of the fork. Only ever use a proper shock pump. That is what they're designed for, for shocks and forks, and they're nice and accurate and you're not gonna damage your expensive suspension fork. Well, there we go, there's 10 classic mistakes people make when they're installing suspension forks to their bikes. Don't be someone that makes one of those 10 mistakes. Do it properly, do it right, and you can enjoy having a suspension fork on your bike. Uh, for another mistakes video, click down here for traveling mistakes with your bike. All the sorts of stuff that you do, like leaving your front wheel at home and knocking those brake pads together when you accidentally use a lever in the back of the car when you've not got a front wheel in there. And click down here if you wanna learn how to set up your suspension in 10 minutes. Really easy how-to video. Anyone can do this and you can do it anywhere. As always, give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments underneath. And of course, don't forget to click the notification bell and it gives you a notification every time we post a new video.